When I say Irish dancing, what do you think of? That one scene in Titanic? This? Usually I kind of explain it to river dance because a lot of people are familiar with that. Well, from now on, you can think of all of that and this school in Schuylkill County. I don't care if you're Italian, Polish, Puerto Rican, it doesn't matter. After a few moments of watching the Sabo School of Irish Dance, you're going to want to get up and do a little three-step jig. And what's really nice about Irish dancing is it brings in different types of dancing. The soft shoe in Irish dancing is similar to ballet, and the hard shoe is similar to tap. So you kind of get a two-for-one deal where you can do two types of dancing all in one. The students at Sabo are serious about competition. From head to toe, you're being judged from the minute you walk on the stage. How you present yourself, um, at your timing to the music, the rhythm, the turnout, and there just has to be something special about you. There's going to be a competition sometimes with 80 to 100 different dancers all at the same time coming one after another and there has to be something special about you because like I said when you get to a certain level it all starts to look the same but what about you is going to stand out between everybody else. Mixing sport with art equals a lot of physical demands on stage. I just have to show the judges and audience that I'm not dying when on the inside I'm just like can we do this. Oh. Ryan Gallagher is one of three dancers we spoke with, and each one does some sort of other training to stay in top shape for dancing. It takes big time dedication to pull off these big time moves. When we go into big moves, we usually kind of not run into it, but we have a run, like a set into it. So yeah, lots of big jumps, lots of spins too. So mentally then, when you know that's coming up, what are you doing in your head to prepare for that? Are you just kind of not even thinking about it? When it comes, it comes. Yeah, for me, thinking about it kind of psychs me out. You just have to remember on stage when you're dancing with other people that you can't be near them because it can be really bad. Like if you do a spin and then you run into them or you do a big jump and then you get caught on their leg. So you always have to make sure that you're not around people too much, but always, always kick it up. Carlin Sabo got into Irish dance because, well, her mother owns the studio. As for her mother, Jackie Sabo Metzinger, she also got her start thanks to her mom. So my mom actually Irish danced growing up. She, when she was a little girl, danced for a woman named Rosemary Timoney, who came from the boat from Ireland, the joke, and she started up Irish dancing classes in, outside of Philadelphia. So my mom danced the whole time, more culturally and for fun, so she introduced me to classes. And then when I started taking classes, I fell in love with it, not only in the dancing, but the whole competition aspect. So my mom always jokes that I took it to a whole nother level, but she just thought I was, she was getting me into an activity, and I ended up going to all the national and world competitions. Having a studio in Schuylkill County is a big deal for 26-year-old Arden Failinger. She used to drive over two hours to New Jersey for classes. Guess how she got her start in Irish dancing. So I live about an hour north of here. I started super local, super small. My mom signed me up when I was three. Couldn't get in until I was four and a half. Um, you know, river dance craze. My grandma wanted me to do it, and I haven't stopped since I was five. So you're a child of the river dance craze. Yes. <laughs> From an Irish family, family or no? Just they were a little, a little Irish, little German. These kids that come in here, it's it's home. It's it is their home away from home. It is their family, their extended family. They they really work so hard together, and I think that's another reason they are so successful. Is they push each other. They um, challenge each other to become better. If one can get their kick up high, the other one wants to get their kick up high. And I think that's why the school is so successful is all the dancers together have really pushed each other to achieve more. When the group is about a month away from a competition, they're dancing around five days a week. After all of their fancy footwork, it's all in the judges' hands. In Irish dancing, the key, some of the key things that we look for are cross and turnout. So you should always have a nice turned out foot and they should always be crossed over each other. In the hard shoe, it's rhythm. The beats that they make should be nice, clear sounds that fit to the music. In soft shoe, you used to be seeing a lot of high kicks, a lot of jumps, um, and a lot of moving around the floor. Some days you feel really good, and you know, it's just, they, some judges don't like your style. A lot of people dance differently. You know, I'm fairly tall compared to some of the girls, so I do different moves, or I do a sa the same move a different way, so they might like it on someone else, just the style thing, but. Most of the time you get comments from the judges so you kind of know why you were ranked a certain way so that's really helpful when you do get them so you kind of know what to work on that next week. 
So yes, competition is very important to these dancers, but so is a certain day that comes around every March. Even in St. Patrick's Day, my champ dancers, they go out to all the local restaurants and pubs and pass the hat, and that is probably the most fun because the competition aspect's not there, and they're able just to perform and relax, and the, the patrons reaction when they're dancing. They're just mind blown and we do that a lot. We go out and dance for the community all the time, nursing homes, different restaurants, different schools um, to really give back to our community. Sabo Mensinger does offer classes for all ages and for those that just want to have fun and not compete. She says Irish dancing is for everyone. Probably my favorite class is my STARS class and that is a class for children with special needs. I started that because I was inspired by one of my students with Down syndrome and she had a few friends who wanted to do it so twice a month I do a free class for all my special needs and it amazes me and brings tears to my eyes every week with their ability and seeing their growth through Irish dancing. So this March when everyone is feeling a little bit Irish don't be afraid to move around to the music and if you feel even more inspired look up the Sabo School of Irish Dance for further instruction. We spend much more time with the dancers on the next Out of Left Field here on SSP TV as we take a look at dance as sport. For right now, for SSP TV News in Orwigsburg, I'm Ken Cara.